This program was brought to you by the Gospel Partners of Matthew Ochoa Ministries. Find out later how you can become a Gospel Partner today. I'm not the sick trying to be healed. I'm the healed resisting sickness. Amen? It's in the anointing that's on your life that enables you to do all things through Christ that strengthens you. Hey, welcome back to Rooted and Grounded. I'm so glad you're joining me today on this episode. Today we're talking about a series, a teaching called The Power of Purity. And we've been in this teaching for a long time now. A couple of weeks have gone by since we've started this teaching. And this has been a great one for you to get into your heart. It deals with us renewing our mind, being transformed by the inside out so that we can see God more clearly in our life. We can see Him move, see His will come to pass and just have a better understanding of who God is and and what He wants for us in our life. So we've been in this for a a while now, like I've said. So this is the first time you've tuned in today. I'd encourage you to go back and watch all the other episodes, listen to all the other videos that we have out there available for you to watch. We have everything on our website that's um, free. We have countless hours on our website for, for you just to get into your heart of video teachings, audio teachings, and I believe that they will truly bless you um, if you take the time to, to dive into, the, into God's Word and to get these truths into your heart. But if you want to get this entire series, you can get it as a DVD. You can also get it as a CD or an MP3 audio download on our website as well. Um, and this, the whole series is just derived from this entire teaching that we're doing right now. Uh, we have the full thing recorded out in advance. So if you want to get the whole teaching, um, just go on our website, matthewochoba.com, and you can get this today um, for a gift of any amount when you give to the ministry. We would love to send this to you um, just for saying thank you for your donation. Uh, we also have the book that's available, The Power of Purity. And this book, I wrote this um, a few years ago, and this book deals uh, with this teaching that we're talking about, and it talks about how we transform our life, not by things we do outwardly, but things we do on the inside, things that take place in our heart as, as, uh, as the first and foremost thing that we do. And a lot of people like to focus on external things and, and behavior modifications or things that deal with your conduct. And we discussed your conduct at the end of this teaching, but the conduct isn't the main part of our transformation. What should happen is we should change from the inside out, and that's what this whole teaching is all about. So if you would like to get this, again, go on our website at matthewochoa.com, and we would love to send this to you uh, for a gift of any amount. So let's go ahead and jump into into today's teaching. Last episode, we ended talking about Martha, when Martha invited Jesus into her home. The Bible says that she had a sister named Mary who also sat at the feet of Jesus and heard his words or heard heard his teachings. And so what the scripture is telling us here is that Mary, it says she also sat at the feet of Jesus, which tells us that Martha was once sitting there too. But then something happened to Martha. Something happened to where Martha lost her, uh, her attention. She didn't pay more attention to Jesus and she got focused on doing something else, doing some some other thing that she felt was important, she felt was needed. And so because of it, the Bible says she actually gets up and she's uh, busy and distracted with much serving, that she goes into the kitchen and she's trying to to provide for all the people who've, who've come into her home because of Jesus was there. And it says that she saw Mary sitting at the feet of Jesus still, and she got frustrated, she got a little angry, maybe she got upset that her sister was over there just sitting, listening to Jesus instead of coming and helping her in the kitchen. And so what she ends up doing is she goes into wherever Jesus was preaching and it says that she tells Jesus, she commands Jesus to tell her sister Mary to get up and to help her with her serving. And what we take away from that is Martha was distracted, like it said, she was distracted with much, much serving. And sometimes in our life, sometimes in, in your job or maybe you work in the ministry, sometimes the work that you do that seems important and that seems needed and that seems like it's the most important thing you could be doing, 
Sometimes those jobs and those priorities become distractions for what's important, for what's actually needed in your life. And what, what is needed? What, what's the answer to that? How do we find out what's needed in our life? Well, Jesus tells us. He says, tells Martha, he says, Martha, oh Martha, you are worried about so many things. Look at Mary. She chose the good part and it will not be taken from her. And so out of all the things that Jesus could have said, he told Martha, your sister chose the best part. Your sister chose the good thing. And so what we can learn from that is that the good thing isn't necessarily all the serving we do, not all the good works that we do. It's not all the things that, that we think are important. The thing that's needed the most in our life is getting God's word into our heart. That's the most important thing that Jesus was talking about there. And I believe that if you apply this into your life, that if you, if you learn how to put God's word as a priority, to put God's word as truth, as the truth, and as your life source, then everything else will fall into place. All of the serving that you wanna do later on, that will fall into place. All of the things that you aspire to do, those will all fall into place. But when we begin to focus on the things that we think are important and the things that we think are needed, then we'll be distracted from whatever it is God's trying to get into our heart. And so we've been talking about distractions for a little bit because distractions are one of the main things that the enemy will use to get you off course, to get you to see God on a, in a, a distorted way. And we have to be careful that we don't let distractions sideline us or take us out um, or do any of those things that could cause us from, from advancing in the kingdom of God and doing what God's called us to do. So today, turn to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, and we're going to look at what the writer of Hebrews says in this. Uh, but before I get into that, I just want to preface that the Christian life, it's not a sprint. The Christian life isn't, isn't just a short 40-yard dash. In fact, the Christian life, it's a lifelong marathon. It's a, it's a race that, that takes place over the period of our entire life. And a lot of people are approaching it like it's a quick sprint, and so they get burnt out really easy. They don't have endurance for things that, that they need endurance for. There's no stamina there. And so whenever they, they see some trials come in their life or they see some, some things come against them that, that, that shouldn't really be coming against them in the kingdom of God, they get discouraged and they quit. A lot of times they quit the race, they stop running the race, um, and they give up because the finish line is just too far ahead. They can't see the finish line. But when we understand that it, this is a lifelong journey, this is a lifelong marathon, and our entire walk with Christ is a lifelong journey, it'll only be completed, not when you do enough good works, not when you give enough money, not when you go to church so many amount of times. This lifelong journey will only be completed when we meet Jesus in heaven or when he comes and raptures us, whichever comes first. That is when our journey truly ends. And so if we can understand that, we will stop being discouraged. We can get away from having a weary heart if we can understand that this is a journey, this is a lifelong race. And there's only one way that we can run this race and run it to where we're sprinting across the finish line, not crawling, and that's with endurance. So Hebrews chapter 12, verse one, the scripture says, for we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So I love this scripture so much. This, this scripture is, was one of the most foundational scriptures that I added to my arsenal when it come, came to, to biblical uh, things like this because it tells us that this is how we run the race. This is how we get through our life with Christ. This is how we get across the finish line. And it says, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that easily ensnares us. And that word ensnare just means to trap. That's all it is, it's to trap someone in it. It's something that you don't see coming. It's something that you're not anticipating. It's a trap and, it, and that's the thing that keeps people from crossing the finish line. That's the thing that keeps people from running this race that's set before us. So he tells us, 
Let us put aside all the weights. Let us put aside all the distractions. Let us put aside all the obstacles, all the things that are dragging us down from running this race and let us run this race with endurance. And then he says, how? How do you run it with endurance? How do you get this stamina? How do you, how do you get to a place where you stop being tired from, from this life that we have in, in, in the world, that this life that we have to run our way, race? Well, verse two says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. So looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. That is the way we run this race, is by looking to Jesus. We don't look to anyone else. We don't look to the left or to the right. We don't look to the people in front of us or the people behind us. What we look to is we look to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. That's it. And the moment we start looking to someone else, the moment we start looking to some other pastor or some other minister or some other person that we have esteemed in life, that's the moment we get off course. That's the moment we, we start losing the race because we've taken our eyes off the prize. We see even Jesus here, he had, uh, he had a specific goal in mind. It says that he was the one who had the joy set before him. So Jesus himself had a goal. Jesus himself had something that was set before him so he can endure the cross. And if Jesus had to have a goal in front of him to do what he did, we have to have a goal in front of us. And that goal is to look more and more like him, to become more and more uh, of a disciple of Jesus. And that is our, that, that's our objective, is to look more and more like Jesus. And so it says to look to Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. He's the one who perfects us. Other translations say the perfecter of our faith. No one else can perfect your faith except Jesus. Again, your pastor can't do it. Your friends can't do it. Your family members can't do it. No one can perfect your faith other than Jesus. You know, Jesus was known, if you read the scriptures in the New Testament, Jesus was known as the carpenter's son. Whenever people would, would see him, they would ask frequently, isn't that the carpenter, carpenter's son? And that's how Jesus was known. But when Jesus started his ministry, that was never mentioned that he did carpentry. It was never mentioned that he was a carpenter. It was whenever he started the ministry, after he got baptized by John the Baptist and the Holy Spirit fell upon him and he was baptized in the Holy Spirit, once his ministry began, carpentry was never mentioned again as his occupation or something that he did. You wanna know why? Because that wasn't what he was called to do. Jesus was not called to be a carpenter. Jesus was not called to craft wood or to make furniture or do any of those things. He did that for a time, but until his ministry was ready to start, then he stopped doing that and he started focusing on the ministry. So Jesus, he focused on the task at hand. He wasn't distracted by things. He wouldn't let things sidetrack him. He only focused at one task at a time. And it says in Matthew chapter 15, verse 24, I am not sent but for the lost sheep of Israel. So he had a goal in mind. He had an objective and that's what he was sticking to it. And that's what we need to do as well. We need to stay focused on Jesus. Stay focused on the goal ahead. You know, oftentimes many people will, will try to discourage you and, and try to persecute you and say things to you that aren't true or say things that are critical to your faith. And a lot of times what we like to do as people is we like to argue with them to get them to see our point of view. They, we like to get them to see why we believe what we believe and, and how we came to this conclusion in our life. But when we understand again that this is a race that we're doing, that we're running a race, and the same principle can be applied in your life that you wouldn't be running a race and looking to the spectators and trying to argue with the spectators as to why you're gonna win the race. I mean, the moment you get out of your lane, go up to the grandstands and argue with the spectator, that's the moment you lose the race. You can't win the race when you're doing stuff like that. But once we stop focusing on all the people on the sidelines, once we stop focusing on the people who are just spectators, that's when we can finally be successful in what we do with the Lord. But if we are distracted, and if we let those things come in, and we let those things take our attention off of Jesus, then and only then 
is when we begin to fall short. That's when we begin to get weary. That's when our stamina and our endurance begins to fade away. So I want you to remember this today. We have to have a solid foundation. We have to have a solid foundation when it comes to running this race. And I want you to do that with me. I want you to develop a solid foundation. That's what this whole teaching is trying to help you do, is to develop a, a strong foundation, a strong point in your life that you can have for the rest of your life, that you can have for the rest of your Christian walk. Because here's the reality of running. Runners need strong legs. If you have weak legs, you can't run very far. If you're not trained, if you haven't built up those muscles, they're not, you're not gonna go very far. You're not gonna have good distance because you don't have a strong foundation underneath. You need to have a strong foundation. You have to build up your support system physically and spiritually. And for us spiritually, Jesus is that foundation. Jesus is the, the support system for our spiritual race. And the more we feed on him, the more we learn from him and the more we get into his word, the stronger we become, the, 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 more, the more we're able to rely on that foundation when we focus more on Jesus. And I, I know there's a lot of people who, they'll look to a lot of pastors and, and a lot of great, great men and women of God and the moment they fall short or the moment they go in, they get into a scandal or, or something happens to them where, where they, they just lose all of their credibility and all of their, their, uh, the things that they built in their ministry, for some reason, people get so discouraged. People, when they find out these things, that either they, they completely stop believing altogether or they stop believing in, in that type of message because someone fell short. You know, there's, there's people who in the, in the ministry who've pre preached the word of faith and they preached the gospel of faith and the gospel of grace and they've done all these great things and then years down the road come by and here they've stolen millions of dollars, they've embezzled this or this pastor had an affair with this person and, and all of a sudden all these things just happen and people, it, they, it causes them to crumble. It causes them to, to lose their faith and to lose their, their relationship with the Lord because they were looking to the people. They were looking to peers. They weren't looking to Jesus. See, I have great mentors in my life and great spiritual fathers, great spiritual people that I look up to and I, that, that I, I, I learn from and I admire and I, 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 I love how much they've got given God's word into their heart and into their life and I wanna be more like that dedication. But if they were to go off and do something that they, I know they shouldn't have done or that the Bible says they can't do or if they were to commit a scandal or commit fraud or commit any of those things, you know what? I'm still believing what I believe, why? Because I'm not looking to them. I'm not looking to these people. I'm not looking to my mentors. I'm not looking to my spiritual leaders. I look to Jesus and those spiritual leaders are only in place as a tool, a resource. And the moment we start forsaking the faith altogether because someone else in the faith failed, that's, that only reflects badly on us, that we're looking to people. We're looking to leaders. We're looking to people who are imperfect and who will always fall short. The same truth can be applied to your healing. If you're believing God for healing, yet you know so-and-so who was a minister and who had great faith and who did, did these things and healed many people, yet they died from this disease and you have the same one. If you're looking to people, you're gonna get discouraged every single time. You know, there's a great, great man of faith who's gone to be with the Lord now. His name was Reinhard Bonnke, and he went all over the world preaching the gospel, predominantly in Africa, leading so many people to the Lord, healing so many people of incurable diseases, blind eyes opening, deaf ears opening, all these great things. Yet, he passed away from an illness. He died from an illness that he was healing people from. And I can guarantee you, there are so many people after his death, they gave up on their healing. They gave up on their faith because they were looking to him. They were looking to a person instead of Jesus. They were looking to a man who has flaws, who has imperfections, who isn't perfect in faith. They were looking to someone other than Jesus. And so because of it, they no longer believe. I have a friend from a, a while ago, I was talking to him and, and we were talking about healing and talking about faith. And I had said something that, about God wanting us healed and that it's in, the, in God's will for us to be healed. And he goes on to say, well, you know, my grandfather was a great man of faith and 
he did so many good things and he was a believer and we were all believing for his healing and he had this disease come on him and we're believing for God to heal him. And um, this, he was, again, he was a great, great man of faith, yet he ended up dying. It's like, so how can you say that, that God's will is for us to be healed if my grandfather, who had great faith and was a great man of faith, died from an illness? He wasn't healed from it. And my only response to him was that you're looking to people to determine what your doctrine is. You're looking to people's experiences to determine what you believe about the Bible. That is the worst place to be. Why? Because people fail. People are not perfect. And the moment we take our eyes off of Jesus, we will get weary. We'll, we'll stop believing. And, and there's a great song that's, that's really famous called Don't Stop Believing, or that has the lyri lyrics in it, Don't Stop Believing. And it, there's that, that's, that's there for a reason. We have to keep our faith. And the way we keep our faith is not by looking to people, not by looking to our peers, not looking at our great-grandfather or our grandfather who had just great faith but failed short. No, no, no. We look to Jesus. That is how we run this race with endurance. And also, just like how a race has obstacles, or sometimes if you're running and, and you're, you're doing an obstacle course or you're doing a marathon, there's going to be obstacles in the way that you have to go around that you have, to, you have to learn how to maneuver those things. The same thing is true with our spiritual race. We have obstacles that will come that will try to slow us down or get us off course. There's going to be things like hardships that happen, criticism that happens, pleasures that happen, and they're all just distractions to get us from finishing the race. That's all they are. And when we can identify those, we'll be so much more successful. When we can identify what is a distraction, and what is a tool to help us win the race? We'll be so much more better off. We'll, we'll, we will be able to run this race so much more easier when you can understand what are distractions. And again, I'm gonna talk about this a little bit more, but the opinion of others, what people think about you and, and what people say about you is only an obstacle that the devil puts in your path so that you can slow down, so he can get you to stop. Again, going back to that analogy, if you're running a race and someone in the grandstands is yelling at you and criticizing you and telling you how slow you are and that you're not gonna win the race, and then you stop your race to go argue with them in the grandstands, you might be able to win the argument. You might be able to prove why you're gonna win the race and how long you've been training for and, and all these other points that can make you win the argument, but you're gonna, win, you're gonna lose the race. So what's it worth to you to win a silly argument with someone who's just a spectator He's not even running the race himself. He's a spectator. And there's so many people in the body of Christ who are just spectators criticizing the ones running the race. Man, if you get that into your heart, you would, that would keep offense from rising up in your life. And the Bible says that offenses will come to every single person, but woe to the man who is offended. Offenses will always be here. Though There's always gonna be some reason for us to be offended. And, and that's just life. That is what life does. Life is an offensive thing. But if you are arguing with people left and right of, because of your faith and because of what they think about you and why you're right, you're losing the race. You know what you have to do? Ignore them. Focus on the prize. Focus on the Jesus. And I can guarantee you, you'll stop being weary. You'll stop being worn out. You'll stop being discouraged. You'll be able to run this race with endurance if you keep your eyes on Jesus. You need to find a middle ground when it comes to all of these things and stop letting distraction keep you from keep, uh, running your race. Amen. I want you to get this teaching today. Like I said, we have it as a DVD, a CD, or an MP3 audio download. You can also get the book on our website as well. But until we see you guys again, be blessed. This week, we are offering the complete teaching, The Power of Purity, in the form of a CD, DVD, or USB created from these videos. When you contact us, you can request a gift of any amount for each of these resources. When you donate to these materials, you are helping us get these same life-changing truths into the hands of people all over the world. To make a donation, visit MatthewOchoa.com today. We would like to express our gratitude to the gospel partners of Matthew Ochoa Ministries and Deep Rooted Church. 
Your generous donations help us provide free ministry materials to those in need. If you're not a gospel partner yet, please consider becoming one by donating $10 or more. Visit matthewochoa.com give to learn more about how you can become a gospel partner today. Hey, this is Pastor Matthew. I wanna personally invite you to an awesome event that we're having here at Deep Rooted Church called Spirit Wind Conference. My great friend, Elijah Morell is gonna be here with us in Visalia again with a list of awesome dynamic speakers. And we are ready to give you what the Lord has put into our heart. It's gonna be an awesome conference. It is November 11th all the way to the 15th. So it's gonna be a jam-packed week filled with the spirit, the word, some awesome worship. I encourage you to be there. Again, it's my great friend Elijah Morrell who's hosting this conference and we're just having the privilege of having him host it right here at Deep Rooted Church. So if you're in the area, if you're in Visalia, Tulare, Hanford, Fresno, or any of the surrounding areas here in the Central Valley, we would love for you to be a part of this five-day conference right here in Visalia, California at Deep Rooted Church. It's gonna be an amazing, amazing event. So please be here at Spirit Wind Conference in 2024, November the 11th, all the way to the 15th. It was you and your spirit and his spirit coming together to pick up the log, coming together to throw in the bucket because this well is deep, but you have something to draw with. His name is Holy Spirit. And God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask or think according to the power that works in you. He's waiting on you in the pasture. When you praise God, you strengthen yourself. When you praise the Lord, you're ordaining strength into your life. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can. I can do. I can do all things through Christ. You can walk through something, but that something does not have to walk on you. Do you understand? You're walking through that. I want to give you the opportunity to invite Jesus into your heart today. If you've never received him, all you have to do is say this, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I acknowledge I need a savior. Thank you for forgiving me of all my sins. Tell me what to do. I invite the Holy Spirit to lead my life. Guide me. I love you, Jesus. I am all yours. And in Jesus name, I pray. Amen. 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 And if you just said that prayer today, it's that simple. And in fact, I want to give you a free gift today. It is a book called A New Life. It'll tell you everything you need to know about what you just did, what to do next, and what you can expect in your Christian walk with Jesus. So I encourage you, let us know if you received Jesus for the first time today. We would love to celebrate with you. Just call the number that you see on the screen today. But until we see you again, be blessed and welcome to the family.